hello friends welcome or welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new my name is Michaela and I make adult coloring videos here on this channel and today I am doing the seventh episode of my coloring community chat I don't know how that happened but today <laughs> <laughs> today I'm here with Alan Robert um Alan tell us a little bit more about yourself and what kind of coloring books you make uh the scary kind uh <laughs> have you seen any of them they're um there is morbid and fun and um, a mixture of comedy and horror all intertwined. You know, every page I try and have a nice balance of horror, comedy, um, and a lot of twisted tributes to some of my favorite horror movies. Um, and a twisted spin on almost anything. You know, the, the new book that I'm working on is actually part six of the Beauty of Horror series. And it um, it takes a fun look at the masters, you know, it's all uh, a spoof almost on uh, famous masterpieces um, done in a twisted kind of cryptic way. His work is absolutely amazing. If you guys have never heard of him before, I'm going to leave all links down below to things I can find, Instagram, website, everything linked down below so you guys can check him out if for some reason you've never heard of him before. Um, but where are you from and how does that affect, I guess, your illustrations? Well, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I went to school at the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. Um, one, one of my teachers is a very famous guy who drew the Mighty Thor, uh, Walt Simonson. And, um, and I kind of just, you know, found my way through school, through art. It was the one thing that, that I was any good at and I just stuck with it. And, um, and the funny thing was that when I was in college, uh, learning to hopefully be a comic book artist one day uh, in the early 90s, um, my band, Life of Agony, um, a hard rock band from Brooklyn, New York, got signed to our first record deal. And we had a choice to uh, support that record and go on tour, which would mean that I would have to put my you know, comic book dreams aside and see what happened with the music. And I decided to do that. I figured it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to, you know, tour with a with a recording uh, to support a, a record that we did. And, um, and that turned into a, a long music career, you know, and it took me a, a very long time to, uh, you know, get the confidence to put out my own books. Um, there was so much competition in school. Uh, there was people that, you know, drew circles around me all day long uh, at School of Visual Arts. And it was um, intimidating to have that, you know, that chance to go around to the big comic book companies like Marvel and DC and show your work and be judged. And I wasn't sure I was ready for that. So I was like, I'm going on tour. Let me see what happens here. <laughs> and um, and it, it turned out to be uh, uh, the right move at that time. We uh, we recorded and played all over the world and um you know we're still playing to this day you know somehow um and um well besides the pandemic we haven't played during the pandemic but other than that you know as we have some dates coming up in january so between um the band and and juggling art it's been a, a very busy kind of crazy life uh, for the last couple of decades i can imagine yeah um I guess, where do you find the most inspiration for your illustrations? Well, I grew up on um, a lot of the more violent comic books uh, when I was a kid, like The Punisher or um, a lot of the, uh, the horror comics. And I always, I always loved that style and, um, and, uh, and like to emulate those, those artists, uh, Mike Zeck, was uh, the artist who did the Punisher limited series uh, when I was a kid. And, um, and these weren't mainstream characters. They weren't like, you know, Spider-Man or something. They were more underground at that time. Now Punisher, you know, is a big, a big title, but um, at that time he was like the underdog. And I like those, those types of underdog characters, you know, even like Hellboy um, before Hellboy had a movie and all that stuff. I, I used to collect the comic books. So um, I like that that dark sense of uh, illustration. Um, that, that's the stuff that really got me excited about drawing. 
but um but really um any anything that made a big impact on me as a, as a young kid i still hold dear to my heart you know like a lot of the horror movies that i grew up with like uh evil dead or texas chainsaw massacre you know movies like that that still um I'll still watch it now. You know, I've I've seen those films, you know, 50 times. Uh, but they never get old for me. And and that's the type of uh, you know, I draw inspiration from all types of things, whether whether it's songs or mu- movies, comics. Um <clears throat> I just soak in whatever's around and and I and it gives me energy. Um and it, you know, I think that um I bring a lot of those elements into the, especially with Beauty of Horror, because it is so influenced by pop culture. Um, there's, you know, homage to, um, you know, some famous celebrities in book five, um, horror movies in book four, the, like I mentioned before, and famous artists in, in the new book. So it's kind of a, a tribute to all the things that I love. I think you can definitely tell in your artwork, especially in those few later, I guess the couple later books that have the specific themes to them, you can definitely tell where things are coming from, for sure. And I think that's amazing. Uh, do you prefer to draw digitally or do you draw like with a pen and paper? It's kind of a mixture, you know, like when I, um, even before The Beauty of Horror, um, I was drawing and writing graphic novels for IDW Publishing, starting as far back as 2009. Um, my first title came out called wire hangers and that was all drawn on paper scanned in and then colored on the computer um and then the next title was crawled to me the same kind of process and then by the time that i started Kilogy, um the third book that was done all digitally and um and mostly because the process was a lot quicker for me and because every time you do a scan you have to clean up the artwork and make sure that everything's super clean before you start moving on to colors and, and things like that. And I do all, you know, all that stuff myself. So I don't work with a, a team, um, you know, handing off artwork for someone else to color or, or something like that. So I actually designed the books and do the lettering and everything. Um, so for me, uh, working all digitally, as I started to, you know, take on more and more projects, uh, just made the most sense, you know, time-wise. But every now and then I'll draw on paper, scan it in and, and finish it up on the computer, you know. It, it, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter so much. Um, the digital stuff, I kind of forced myself into that world because I knew it would be a lot easier from a technical standpoint. And I was like, uh, I better learn this before I, I'm too scared to jump in, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been cool because uh, I'm able to draw on the road when I'm touring with the band. I have um, an iPad Pro um, with an Apple Pencil and, and that does the trick, you know. Um, in the past, I would, you know, have all my art supplies backstage at the concerts and set up, you know, on the table and, and just, you know, try not to spill anything on the paper, you know. <laughs> uh, so it's a lot easier. Uh, even uh, traveling, you know, on a plane or something, you know, you just break out the pad. So um, it, it's been a it's been a cool transition, you know, and it's been nice to be able to do both. What is your favorite coloring book that you've released so far? Um, probably the last one, um, the um, not creature feature, but the. Um, the Haunt of Fame one, because uh, there's so many um, tributes to famous celebrities that that made an impact on me in there, um, you know, and and in the stages of their career where um, I was young enough to be, you know, blown away by like someone like Robin Williams, you know, as Mark and Mindy or, you know, uh, in, in those early stages of their lives, you know, yeah. and um yeah, there's so many in there. Um, I haven't looked at the book in a while, but um, you know, there's some great videos online where where folks have gone through every page and they recognize each character. And, and sometimes it's tricky for people because you know, if you're a little younger and you don't know some of the celebrities that uh, are from days gone by, um, 
<clears throat> you, ha you have to kind of, uh, you know, do some research. But uh, even with the horror movies in, uh, in Creature Feature, because I'm such a big horror buff, mm -hmm. that there's some under the radar films in there um, that aren't so, you know, mainstream. Yeah, when I was looking through, I definitely, I had me and I had my mom looking through it. And I'm like, okay, you help me figure out what some of these are because yeah, I don't know them all, but like I, I could get some of them, but not quite all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Together, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> team, team effort. <laughs> exactly. Has your art style changed over time at all or have you felt it's been pretty consistent? Oh yeah, it's all over the place. And, um, and sometimes on purpose because um, when I first started with the comic books and graphic novels, um, if you go back to that artwork, um, there's a lot of textures involved with just the whole look of it. Um, I, I really tried to create a lot of atmosphere and lighting and, um, and did a lot of digital effects. Um, because I really was looking to make them very cinematic. Every panel I felt like was almost like a storyboard in a film. That's how I wanted to treat it. And then as I tackled each book, I really wanted to capture the vibe of the story that I was telling. So I purposely pushed myself out of signature looks for artwork and really just wanted to make the right artwork that I felt was suitable for that story. So um, each book has its own look. It almost looks like different artists did each book and that was done purposely. And even with the beauty of horror, learning, almost, re, almost relearning how to draw without heavy inks or shadows, just to do the straight line, line art where every line is the same weight was an effort. You know, it's like stripping down to nothing, you know, and I, I really try not to use any cross hatching or uh, pen and ink type of uh, techniques to create depth. I really try and do that with um, composition and layout and avoid any kind of heavy blacks or, or thick lines. Um, so if you look at the beauty of horror as a, as a whole set, it's the same line weight throughout the whole series. So it was, you know, these are conscious decisions, you know. Interesting. Maybe, yeah, people may have noticed that, maybe not. That's interesting. Do you think you would ever release a coloring book that is non-horror related? Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because the whole thing started, um, I guess it was 2016, and I had gotten home from rehearsal with the band, and my wife and my daughter were coloring when a Johanna Basford's books. I think it was um, the ocean one. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was beautiful. And I had never seen an adult coloring book like that. You know, um, I, I started to, at that time, 2016, they started to pop up in like the grocery store and you'd see mandalas and things like that, but nothing really um, high end or uh, so elaborate like Johanna Basford's uh, books. Yeah. And I was kind of blown away. I was like, this is way different than the coloring books I grew up on, which was like newspaper print, you know, and like, <laughs> you know, whatever we were coloring, G.I. Joe or Godzilla <laughs> or whatever. Um, so this was like beautiful um, paper and the designs were really unique. And um, I couldn't find anything in there that I wanted to color. I wanted to, you know, join my family and, and start coloring with them. And I was like, there's nothing here that I would really color, you know, being a horror fan. Right. And um, and my wife said, well, what would what kind of page would you want to color in? I was like, probably the most disgusting thing that I could think of, which was at the time was um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with CBGB's, but CBGB's was a, an old punk club in New York City uh, where the Ramones played and Blondie. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it was disgusting. The, the place was total gross gross out and um it, it was known it had a, a bathroom that had no stalls on it and stickers and grime all over the walls and it was a, an iconic place in new york, new york city culture and i was like i would draw i would color cbgb's bathroom mm -hmm. and um and i drew it up that day and um i posted it on facebook and this was uh april fool's day 
And I, I said, here's my adult coloring book page as a joke. And it was downloaded something like 400 times. Wow. And people started coloring them, coloring CBGB's bathroom and posting them up. And it was so much fun to interact with fans in that way because I had been drawing my comic books and things like that. Uh, and this was completely different. This was like an art project, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> and it was super cool. And then, uh, you know, I was like, this is so much fun. I, I would love to continue to do this. So I pitched IDW, basically the first horror adult coloring book. And they said, yes. And um, it was, they said yes so fast. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that they were just messing with me because it's April Fool's Day or what, you know? But uh, I was like, are you sure? And they were like, yeah, we've been wanting to do something like this. And um, it was a big gamble for them, I felt, mm -hmm. because it really hadn't been done before. Uh, coloring was such this, um, you know, all the, all the coloring uh, books were very nature-based or beautiful patterns. And this was like almost a spoof on that, you know, it kind of mixed the first book, especially kind of mixed some of those beautiful flowers and stuff with like a, a corpse hand or, um, <laughs> you know, I, I tried to have like a, a butterfly and then a decomposing body, you know, it was like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was um, a nice mashup. And, mm -hmm. um, and it was a big experiment, you know, and I, and I really thought that it was just going to be one and done. All right, I got that out of my system and that's it. And it turned out to be this, this huge hit. And, um, and I, I got even more uh, into it, you know, because I had halfway through book one, I came up with Guliana mm -hmm. um, and she became the real face of the series and, um, and just, exploring her, her world and building the characters around her throughout the series has been so much fun and uh, it's taken on a life of its own really mm -hmm. yeah I, I feel like like people like love your stuff but even if they don't love horror like they can definitely appreciate the artwork you do because it is so different than literally anything we ever see <laughs> like, that's <ever>. good <laughs> <laughs> I guess outside of illustrating what other hobbies do you have well, like I said uh music has been a big part of my life and and uh writing and um recording music and playing uh all over the world um besides that um when I was younger I would uh, scuba dive a lot um I'm a certified scuba diver and we would go on trips all the time and dive with sharks and things like that um my wife is trying to get me into skiing, but I'm so scared that I'm gonna fall and break my wrist and I can't draw anymore. I, I'm, I'm like, bunny slope is good, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we try and, try and stay active and do fun stuff outdoors. That's awesome. Um, I guess you wanna talk about your music a little bit more? Um, just, I guess, like what kind of music you perform, like what you, what you do, I'm just curious. <laughs> Yeah, have you have you seen any videos or anything like that? I have not. No. All right, you should check it out. Um, we've been around since 1989. Um, started in Brooklyn, New York, and there's actually a documentary coming out about the band. Oh. Um, yeah, I think around um, around March. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> and um, we've been together a long time, and have gone through many ups and downs over the years. Um, we played with some of the biggest bands in the world, like Metallica and Black Sabbath and Red Hot Chili Peppers, David Bowie over the years. Um, it, it's been fun. It's been fun and a lot of hard work. And, um, you know, uh, the last record we put out was 2019 called The Sound of Scars. And there's a bunch of videos online you could check out. Um, and, just because of the pandemic, you know, we, we had to cancel our touring plans the last two years. So it's been a little rough. And thankfully, um, since I've been home, I've been filling my time with just drawing nonstop, you know, um, the tarot, the beauty of horror tarot cards came out. Mm -hmm. uh, the, la the last book came out, uh, did, um, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but the beauty of horror, um, haunt this journal book came out. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, the pandemic has been a killer for uh, the music industry, unfortunately, but um, 
for book creators like me. Uh, it's been um, it's been an opportunity to really dive into the artwork, you know. Yeah. Do you have any like tour plans? I guess maybe for twenty twenty two. I know COVID's not really over, but yeah, I mean they keep pushing our tour dates. You know, every six months we get another alert. Hey, and we're gonna have to move this again. Um, so yeah, we have a, a Northeast tour um, book for the end of January into February. And then we have uh, a ton of tour plans for the summer. We play all those big European open air festivals. Um, and so those got pushed probably three, three times now. Um, so, but we'll see, we're, we're booked right now for uh, all summer. Um, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What is your favorite place that you've traveled to? Um, you know, I love Germany and Belgium and uh, the Netherlands. Uh, I, I've made lifelong friends there. You know, we've been touring there since the early 90s. And, um, and we've just seen, you know, a lot of familiar faces every time we, we go back there to play. And we've made some some really uh, great friends that have even come come over and stayed with us since uh, you know just seeing them and and uh, connecting with people. Um, so yeah, I would never uh, change those experiences. It's just you know just an amazing thing to see other cultures and eat other foods and mm -hmm. meet people from all different walks of life. It's it's been a blessing really. That's awesome. Um, what is your favorite horror movie? Mm. <laughs> My all-time favorite would be The Shining. Mm -hmm. um, and a close second would probably be Evil Dead 2. The, the original, not the, not the remakes. <clears throat> <laughs> awesome. Um, if you are able slash want to spill anything, do you have any fun future plans for your coloring books? Well, um, I could talk about some vague ideas that, that are happening. Um, there's, there's talk of bringing Guliana and her world into like an animated type of show. Ooh. Um, <clears throat> these things take a very long time, so... You know, I'm not going to hold my breath, but there are some uh, very excited people behind the scenes trying to make that happen. That is awesome. Um, I guess last question, uh, if you could give one piece of advice to somebody looking to get into creating their own coloring books, um, what would it be? Just do it. Don't tell anyone that you can't do it. Uh, just do it. Um, there's nothing stopping you. And um, but. Be careful what you wish for, because when I got the green light to do the Beauty of Horror 1, and then they told me it was going to be 88 pages, double-sided, I almost had a heart attack because I was like, how am I going to come up with 88 pages of just black and white line work with no words? It was, it was intimidating. So be careful what you wish for. And each book, I kind of go through that, like, oh, my God, how am I going to do this, you know? Um, so it, it takes a lot of hard work and effort. There's no doubt about that. Um, so just buckle up and get ready to do the work. And, um, and, you know, you don't have to start with a whole book, you know, you can just start with a couple of pages and a couple of free pages and see what people do with them. Because for me, I learned so much about drawing these pages by seeing people color them in mm -hmm. you know the color work almost inspires the new pages because certain lines that I add to my designs help the colors create highlight shadows depth and and I learn what works and what doesn't work from seeing everyone's beautiful you know creations and and that's been half the fun is you know, it's like we said, it's a, it's a never ending art project, you know, and everyone's in it, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and going online and, and when people tag me in, in uh, the, their color work for the pages, 
you know, I don't think I've ever seen the same page colored the same way in all these years. You know, it's just yeah. everyone has their own style. Everyone chooses their own palette. Everyone has their own inspirations and, and vision for that page in their head and, and able to put whatever they're working with too. Some, some people work with crayons, colored pencils, markers, nail polish. I've seen nail polish and, and all kinds of crazy stuff um, to create all different kinds of effects. And, um, and that's half the fun. And so like, you know, I would say to anyone that wants to do it, just do it and uh and and don't ever let someone tell you that you can't or you're not good enough because that's that's just you know someone projecting their own insecurities on you absolutely 100 percent agree with that thank you so much alan for joining me today i really appreciate it uh do you have anything else you want to add before we end <laughs> no i'm i'm so uh so grateful for uh you reaching out and uh, i'm glad we could do it me too. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Definitely, like I said, go check out the links I'm leaving down below. Not sure what's going to be left yet, but there'll be something. Uh, and subscribe if you're not already. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.